Hi friends, welcome back to our channel Physics Tutorial. Today we are going to continue with the second chapter of Plus 2 Physics. This is part 3 video and in the last video we had discussed potential due to uh, a system of charges then equipotential surfaces, potential energy of a system of charges that was in the case of uh, absence of external electric field. And now we are going to discuss the potential energy in an external electric field. Okay, so now we can move to the video. So here we are going to find the potential energy in the case of an external electric field. So uh, last class we had told uh, how to find the potential energy of a system of charges, right? So there was single charge and two charge, three charge like that we have already found. But here there is an external electric field and then due to this external electric field this uh, equation will be varying right so that change we can understand here and we will uh, consider single charge and two charges only these two uh, system of charges we are considering here and first of all we have to find the potential energy in an external field due to a single charge so here we are considering a charge plus q and that is kept in point a here we can see a point a and we are taking this point q here and we can see that the electric potential because there is an external field due to that there will be a electric potential already here okay so that potential can be taken as vr right that means it, this is kept in an external electric field and due to that electric field a potential will be already acting on this charge so that potential can be taken as vr and now we are placing this charge plus q and due to this charge what is the potential energy of the system that we have to find then how we can find the potential energy due to the single charge potential energy means the work done we have to calculate right so the work done to bring this q charge from infinity to that point a that we have to find so how will we will find the equation for work done yes that we have already used in the last classes right w will be equal to v into q w is equal to vq that we have already told right so the same equation we can use here also so how we will find the work done to bring this q charge from infinity to a so that will be va into q w is equal to va into q right and this va means here uh, i have already told that due to this external electric field there will be an electric potential so that will be equal to vr into q so instead of getting zero here we are getting the work done uh, as w is equal to vr into q this work will be stored as the potential energy of the system so here w is equal to vr into q is the potential energy due to this point charge plus q clear so uh, now we can consider the potential energy in an external field in the case of two charge system is this clear only because of this external field this uh, electric potential is coming here that is why we are getting the work done as vr into q or this is the potential energy of a single charge system now we have a system of two charges so here we are considering two charges that is q1 and q2 and they are separated by distance r12 okay and q1 is kept in uh, point a and q2 is at b and here we have an external electric field and vr1 is the electric field at q1 and vr2 is the electric field at q2 and now we have to find the potential energy in an external field so how we can calculate the potential energy of this system of two charges so here first of all we will find the work done to bring this q1 charge from infinity to this point a and then we will find the work done to bring this q2 charge from infinity to b then we have to add it together so total work done will be equal to the potential energy of the system so first of all we can bring this q1 charge from infinity to a so what will be the work done here work done to bring the charge q1 from infinity to a that is w1 is equal to vq we are using here so va into q1 we have to find so here va means that is vr1 is the electric potential so vr1 into q1 so instead of getting zero in the case of absence of external field here we are getting vr1 into q1 as the work done for the single charge right then we have to find the 
work done to bring this charge Q2 from infinity to B. So when we find the electric potential at Q2, we have to uh, find the potential due to this Q1 and also due to the external electric field. So what will come here? W2 will be equal to Vb into Q2, right? So here Vb means that will be equal to Vr2 that is due to this external electric field plus due to charge Q1. What is the potential? 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 by R12, okay? Into Q2 is there. So W2 is Vb into Q2. This is Vb into Q2 we have to do. Then what we will get here? We can multiply that with Q2. Right, so V R2 Q2 plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 Q2 by R12 we are getting. Now, we have W1 and W2. So, how we can find the potential due to this system of two charges? We can add it together, right? W1 plus W2 that will be stored as the potential energy. Now, we can add it. So, what we will get? W1 plus W2 that means V R1 Q1 plus V R2 Q2 plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r12 so this is the potential energy of system of two charges so in similar way we can find the potential energy of system of three charges four charges like that clear next topic is potential energy of a dipole in an external field so here we are going to find the potential energy of a dipole so dipole we have already discussed in the last chapter right and here in this chapter also we have just uh, told about that so what is dipole dipole is two equal and opposite charges they are separated by a small distance right so that dipole we are placing in an external electric field that means a uniform electric field we are taking and in that uniform electric field we are placing this dipole here we can see the uniform electric field okay so this is the direction of electric field and here we are placing this dipole dipole is this minus q plus q charges are there and it is separated by a distance 2a and the dipole moment of this dipole is p and when we are placing this dipole in an electric field what happens is that there will be two forces acting in equal and opposite direction so this force will be acting in this direction and uh, minus q means due to this uh, charge the force will be acting that means qe will be acting in opposite direction so the force will be q into e clear and uh, these two forces they are equal and opposite actually they are having the same magnitude but the directions are opposite and it is not in a uh, straight line it is not uh, acting in a in linear right so what happens if they are act means these two forces they are acting in opposite directions and it is not linear means it will uh, act as a couple right then uh, it will produce a torque and it starts to rotate so uh, if uh, it is placed in this field what happens it will rotate that means it acts as a couple and it starts to rotate so what happens if it is coming like this means the angle is theta here right so angle theta is the angle between the electric field axis and the axis of the dipole here we can see this is the electric field line and this is the axis of the dipole so theta is the angle which makes um, which is making between this electric field axis and the axis of the dipole and when it rotates what happens this angle will be changing right so after some time what happens this will be coming like not exactly like this here it will be coming like this so the angle will be theta 2 like that it will be changed okay so here we can see that uh, the torque will rotate from angle theta 1 to theta 2 so when it rotates the angle varies and it rotates from theta 1 to theta 2 so for pot finding potential energy what we have to do here potential energy means that is the work done so here we have to find the work done to rotate this dipole from uh, theta 1 to theta 2 that we are going to find so first of all we can write the steps here the work done to rotate the dipole through an angle d theta that means for making a small change in angle d theta what will be the work done dw how we can find work done dw is equal to f dot dx right force into displacement that is the equation for work done so here we are taking this uh, force as torque because that is torque is acting here so we can replace this force by torque and then this dx will become d theta 
So dW is, will be equal to tau into d theta. Then we will get the small work done to displace this through an angle d theta. Then the total work done we have to find here. That means the total work done to rotate the dipole from theta 1 to theta 2. That we have to find. So how we can find the total work done? Yes, that we can integrate, right? So integral theta 1 to theta 2 tau d theta. That will be the total work done. So tau will be uh, p e sin theta and p is the uh, dipole moment that value is equal to 2 a q right so that we have already studied p e sin theta is torque and p is equal to 2 a q so we can uh, substitute that equation here so what we, we will get here integral theta 0 sorry theta 1 to theta 2 tau means p e sin theta into d theta so integral theta 1 to theta 2 p e sin theta d theta that we are getting so instead of tau we are giving the substitution then we can integrate the, here p and e are constants that we can take outside then what is coming inside the integral p e integral theta 1 to theta 2 sin theta d theta only we have to integrate integral sin theta is equal to minus cos theta right so integral sin theta means here we can give minus cos theta and this p e is already here so what we are getting here p e into minus cos theta within the limit theta 1 to theta 2 here we can apply limits so what we will get minus p. so this minus we can take outside so minus p e into upper limit minus lower limit we have to apply here then upper limit means cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1 that means the total work done is equal to minus p e into cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1 this work done will be stored as the potential energy of the uh, dipole okay so here we have to remember this equation w is equal to minus p e into cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1 when the angle changes the value of the potential also potential energy also changes so this is the potential energy of a dipole in an external field clear we have to study about electrostatics of conductors so conductors means there will be uh, free electrons and they will conduct right so the electrostatics of conductors that we have to study and in this case uh, there are six points given to you and all these points we have already discussed in the, these two chapters and the thing is that we will uh, have a summary of that points only so just understand the six points of electrostatics of conductors so the first point is inside a conductor electric field is zero so if you are taking a conductor suppose we are taking a metal and then inside that conductor the electric field will be zero so how to prove that so consider a uniform electric field uniform electric field is as shown here and now suppose we are placing a metal plate here metal metal means that is a conductor right so here we are placing a metal then what will happen here in metal there will be uh, free electrons right so we are placing it in an electric field what will happen the positive charges will move in the direction of field and the negative charges will be moving in the opposite direction of the field so here this is the direction of electric field okay this is the direction of electric field and when we place this metal in this electric field what will happen here the positive charges will be moving in the direction of field this is the direction of field means the positive charges will move to this side and if uh, okay again the negative charges will be moving in the opposite direction of the field here we can see the negative charges all will move to this side okay so this is the negative charge and it will move in a direction opposite to the direction of field okay then here it will constitute a field so here from positive charge to negative charge the field will be developed okay and we know that the metal is a uh, it will be neutral right so there will be equal number of positive and negative charges and due to this separation there will be a, a field developed here we can see the direction of the field will be from positive charge to negative charge so that is just opposite to the direction of external field so this is the internal field and this is the external field so when we place this metal in electric field what happens the electrons will be moving uh, until the external and internal electric field becomes equal so both the 
fields will be equal but the direction of these two are opposite then what will happen these two will get cancelled so because of that inside the conductor electric field will be zero you just understand that inside the conductor the electric field will be zero so that is the important point that you should remember okay then th these reasons we have already studied okay so that is the explanation for that and the second point is that at the surface of a charged conductor electric field must be normal to the surface at the surface of a charged conductor electric field must be normal to the surface so here we can consider a conductor see at the surface of this charged conductor that electric field must be normal so that means here suppose this is a conductor and the charges will be residing over here and now if we draw a the direction of electric field that should be perpendicular to the surface suppose here this is the surface means this should be perpendicular here here like this so all should be perpendicular to the surface otherwise what will happen suppose we have a uh, surface over here and if we draw this like this okay this suppose this is the electric field this is not possible but we just uh, show that how what will happen if we place means if the electric field is not normal right so in this case what will happen the electric field is not no, norm means it is not a uh, normal means here we can resolve it into two components here one component is the this is another component this is the sine component and e sine theta and this will be e cos theta right here this is perpendicular this is okay but this is parallel component that means cos component is parallel component so if we re resolve this electric field what will happen two components will be there and this is parallel component so if there is a parallel component what will happen the force will be equal to f is equal to q into e right so the charges on the surface will experience a force in the direction parallel to the surface also then what will happen to the charges that also moves okay if the charge moves means current will be produced but this is not possible okay so if it is uh, at rest it will not uh, conduct any current okay so electric current will not be produced in the case of that uh, cur means current electricity will not be able to produce when the uh, conductors at are at rest that is why we can say that the surface of the charged conductor uh, at the surface of the charged conductor the electric field must be normal to the surface otherwise what will happen here there will be parallel component of field due to this field the force exists here and due to this force the electrons moves and the current produces but it is not at all possible that is why we can say that at the surface of a charged conductor the electric field must be normal to the surface that means that should be perpendicular so this is the second point we can move to the third point that is the interior of a conductor can have no excess charge in the static situation so if you are taking the static situation of a conductor inside the conductor there will be no excess charge that means the interior of a conductor can have no excess charge in the static situation static situation means in a state of rest okay so if the conductor is at rest means there will be no excess charge inside that conductor so here we can consider a surface means the conductor and here we can see the charges will be distributed on the surface and now we can consider a gaussian surface here a gaussian surface a closed surface we have to consider here this is closed okay so this is a gaussian surface then how we can find the flux of this that means phi e will be equal to integral e dot ds 1 by epsilon 0 into sigma q right so that is according to gauss's law we can find the electric flux that is phi um, e will be equal to in the closed integral e dot ds that will be equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into total charge sigma q then we have studied that inside the conductor what will be the value of electric field yes that will be zero so inside the conductor the electric field is zero means this equation that is integral e dot ds will be equal to zero right so zero will be equal to one by epsilon zero into sigma q what does it mean zero is equal to one by epsilon zero sigma q means one by epsilon zero means that is a constant so uh, this will not be zero that means sigma q will be equal to zero right so 
1 by epsilon 0 will not be 0 means sigma q is equal to 0. That is why we can say that the interior of a conductor can have no excess charge in static situation. So here we have considered a Gaussian surface inside the conductor, right? So here there will be no excess charge in static situation. Now we have the fourth point of electrostatics of conductors that is electrostatic potential is constant throughout the volume of the conductor and has the same value on its surface. So if you are taking a, a conductor the electrostatic potential will, will be the same throughout the volume. So inside the uh, conductor we can see that the value of potential will be the same and the value on its surface also will be same. So here this value of potential is a constant and the surface also will be having the same value of potential. So here we know that the force is equal to Q into E, F is equal to QE, right. If e electric field is 0, what will happen here? Force will be 0, right. Here we know that inside the conductor the electric field is 0. So here what happens? The force also will be 0. So the charges will not experience any force, okay. So inside this the, there will be no force experienced. So what happens is that the work done to move a charge will be zero because the uh, value of electric field is zero means there should be no work done to move a charge from one point to another. That means delta, potential difference is equal to zero. If, pot, if there was a potential difference means we have to do work in bringing the charge from one point to another, right? But here there, there should be no work done to move a charge means the potential difference will be 0. That means delta V is equal to 0. That means uh, the potential is a constant. That means V is equal to a constant. So just understand the thing that electrostatic potential is constant throughout the volume of the conductor and has the same value on its surface. Clear? So that was the fourth point in electrostatics of conductors we have the fifth point that is electric field at the surface of a charged conductor is E is equal to sigma by epsilon 0 into n cap here E is equal to sigma by epsilon 0 n cap that will be the electric field at the surface of a charged conductor here sigma is the surface charge density and n cap is the unit vector normal to the surface so this is the fifth point electric field at the surface of a charged conductor is E is equal to sigma by epsilon 0 n cap. Okay and this n cap we know that okay that means that will be a normal that uh, on the surface of the conductor the electric field will be always normal to the surface that we have already told. So that is n cap that is a unit vector normal to the surface. Now we have to prove that E is equal to sigma by epsilon 0. So for that we can consider a conductor here any shape we can assume and here we are taking a conductor and we have to apply Gauss's law here. So for applying Gauss's law we can consider any Gaussian surface. So here we are considering a cylinder and the thing is that half of the cylinder is inside this conductor and only the half will be outside this conductor. So inside the conductor what about electric field that will be zero right so no need to worry about this inside portion so only the upper portion we have to consider for applying this Gauss's law then how we can write the equation of Gauss's law closed integral e dot ds is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into sigma q right here e and ds here the direction of the electric field is upwards right here ds is also upwards so here what will be the angle between E and DS here these two are parallel right so the angle is 0 so instead of uh, cos theta we can write cos 0 because this will be E DS cos theta that will be equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into sigma q here theta is equal to 0 degree means E DS cos 0 we will get so cos 0 is 1 then E DS will be equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into sigma q and now this electric field is constant so that we can take outside so e into integral ds is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into sigma q and this integral ds is the area area of the cylinder so integral ds we can write as a and now we can substitute then what we will get e is equal to e into a will be equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into sigma q clear and e into a is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into here instead of q we can uh, write in terms of surface charge density that is sigma a 
so uh, sigma q can be written as sigma a because sigma is the surface charge density and a is the area so this a and a will get cancelled then e will be equal to sigma by epsilon 0 e will be equal to sigma by epsilon 0 or in vector form how we can represent that e will be equal to sigma by epsilon 0 into n cap e is equal to sigma by epsilon 0 into n cap so here sigma is the surface charge density and n cap is the unit vector normal to the surface so that is the fifth uh, point that is electric field at the surface of a charged conductor is e is equal to sigma by epsilon 0 into n cap okay so that uh, now we can move to the last now the last topic is electrostatic shielding so that is the sixth point of electrostatics of conductors so in the case of conductors electric field inside a metal ca cavity will be zero so that is the electrostatic shielding so here we can say that the vanishing of electric field inside a metal cavity is called electrostatic shielding that means vanishing of electric field inside a metal cavity so inside the metal cavity the electric field will be zero and this can be used in some cases that is sensitive electrical instruments can be protected from external uh, electric field by placing it in a uh, metal cavity so if you are placing it in metal cavity that can be protected from the external electric field so this is the uh, case of electrostatic shielding and here we have to remember this point electric field inside a metal cavity will be equal to zero okay that is all about electrostatics of conductors now we have uh, discussed all the six points regarding that and now we can uh, conclude the video so if you have any doubts or suggestions you can comment and thanks for watching